Hi and welcome to Themic. In this video, we will talk about degrees of freedom and how we can identify them in a not so simple multi body arrangement. We will see that this is not that difficult. If we start from a basic principle, the total possible number of degrees of freedom that a body can have. And if we also account for the restrictions of movement, that is, constraints. You will not regret this video. When we talk about degrees of freedom, we simply talk about movements. A device or artifact used to cancel any of these degrees of freedom, or as we said, a possibility of movement, creates something called a constraint. Then, a multiple degree of freedom system is a system that can move in more than one way. What I have just said encloses the core concept of what is coming next. Let's bring a block of mass. If we think that this block is floating in space, and we additionally consider that we will measure every possible movement using a Cartesian coordinate system, you can see right away that the block could translate in three directions, and it can also rotate about the three Cartesian axes. We say that the block has six degrees of freedom, three translations and three rotations. In a situation where the movement of the block is only represented with a planar movement, then we can say that the block can translate in two directions and rotate about another one that happens to be perpendicular to the plane. That is, the block has three degrees of freedom in two dimensions. But you and I know that a block floating in space or moving on a plane by itself is not that good an application to us. We need to bring it down to earth. And it is more than obvious that we need to make it work together with other bodies. Let's keep working with our friend. And to start from the simpler case, let's assume that the block moves on a plane, or two dimensions. Imagine that we want to form a pendulum with this block. To succeed, we need another component. Let's bring a rod, so it looks more like a pendulum. Attaching the rod to the block does not affect the number of degrees of freedom of the configuration. Both block plus rod can still translate in two directions and rotate about another. But if we attach the rod to the ground using a hinge, technically it's a revolute joint, we notice that the system rod block cannot translate as previously. The system can only rotate about an axis that is coincident with the axis of the hinge or revolute joint. Then from three degrees of freedom that we had, now we have only one, a rotation. Introducing the revolute joint eliminated two of the degrees of freedom. If we attached another rod block to our current pendulum and attached it to the first block using another revolute joint, we will end up with a system called double pendulum with two degrees of freedom, two rotations. All this explanation can be put in mathematical form, so you don't have to imagine things floating in space or twist your head following the rotation of a body. So let's cut it short and save the math for another video. I'm sure that it is now completely clear to you what multiple degree of freedom systems are. I told you, you were not going to regret this video. Thanks for watching and don't miss the video for the next part of this lesson.